Hi, I'm Roxy. Today I'm going to show you how I made this poster. It's my entry for the June Proco Challenge. So if you're not familiar with the Proco Challenge, you're probably not familiar with Proco.com. Um, if you're an artist and you've not heard of it, you, you're missing out. Um, it's, it's an artist portal. Um, it's got a whole whack of quality courses. A lot of them are even free and uh, a growing forum community. So Proco.com hosts a challenge every now and then, um, often with noteworthy prizes. The June challenge is called My Life Movie Poster with Carla Ortiz. Um, she herself is an award-winning artist. Um, she's produced some truly beautiful cover art. So she's the perfect judge for a competition like this. And the challenge is that I have to produce a movie cover where I play the lead role. So uh, this is um, an example poster that they've given us. And this is what I produced. That's me with the baseball bat and the crazy look. Um, I love the first Zombieland as well as the sequel, Zombieland Double Tap. I also play a lot of computer games and especially love the kind where I get to deal a bit of blunt force trauma to zombies. Uh, my friends always joke that they'd love to be on my side during a zombie apocalypse. So I thought this would be really appropriate. Um, the two gents behind me are Stan Prokopenko of Proko.com fame and Marshall Vandruff, uh, who does the Draftman YouTube channel uh, with Stan. Um, I'll put a link in the description to that there wholesome, light-hearted, and full of good art tips. You really can't go wrong with these gents. So on to business. I've time-lapsed roughly six hours of work and I'll narrate what I'm doing over that. As you can see, the first thing I did was I pulled in a logo. I'm going to change it later, but I needed it for placement. Here I'm roughly blocking in a silhouette for myself, loosely using the reference on the left, rotating the canvas to make those awkward angles easier to draw. I have that function hot keyed onto my stylus. So I can flip my canvas around like as if it's a paper. I've now hidden my character and I'm working on another character. I wanted at least three characters for the poster. I had to look up a lot of reference because we don't actually have baseball in South Africa. So um, this is the bowler, if that's the correct term. And this character is going to be the catcher. Also don't know if that's the correct term. Here I'm rearranging the three characters, just trying to find nice negative space. Here I'm opening up Nexus Font. It's my font manager. It's free, actually. Um, and in my opinion, as a graphic designer, uh, it's amazing. Uh, what it does is it allows you to categorize your font collection into folders. And then if you have a program open, then anything in that folder will be usable in whatever program you open as if it's installed. So it saves you from actually installing all your fonts, um, resulting in your programs opening up quicker. So I'll of course um, include a link to the Nexus font program for you to download, as well as the template file that I used um, for the credits at the bottom. And that also includes the, uh, the font, which is pretty awesome. Now that I'm happy with the general layout, I am just tightening up the silhouettes a little bit. The, uh, the catcher is going to be Marshall Vandruff. And on the right hand side, the bowler is going to be Stan Prokopenko. Obviously his face is turned away, so we won't really be able to recognize him, but I'm going to put his surname on, his, uh, on the back of his shirt. The baseball club looked more like a Flintstone club, so decided to redraw that using um, a straight line as a base. Here I have to imagine what a baseball shirt would look like in this scenario because uh, the original reference, well, she wasn't wearing baseball gear. So the plan here is to create a baseball logo, like a team logo. And this took zero effort. I just used a twirly, baseball-y looking font and uh, warping it into place. Same with the back. The back of the shirt's just a standard slab serif looking font. 
what you'd typically find on the back of a sports shirt, easy to read. And also just warping it into place. Obviously you need to get rid of Double Tap because this movie is the third one. And I thought third base would be kind of appropriate. I'm using Photoshop's Liquify tool just to bend it slightly. Also making the release date February 31 just to give people a hint that this is not a real poster. I'm not so much of a troll that I want people to be waiting for this to, to come out. <laughs> I'm just lightening up those shirts a bit because I want um, I actually want the text to be darker. You'll notice it's it's very like kind of two-tone at the moment and, and I do want it like that but not necessarily these two colors, this uh, ivory and dark blue. Um, I just wanted a, a light color and a dark color to block in everything and I'll work on the actual colors a little bit later. At this point I've abandoned the reference that I used to block in the figures because you know three different pictures have three different light sources and uh, I need this to be cohesive so as I'm working on these shirts I'm making sure to keep a consistent light source. So I've decided I'll have two light sources, one from the side and one from above. So every wrinkle of cloth and every piece of anatomy needs to reflect that. So here I'm working on Marshall's face. Got some reference. I hope Stan and uh, Marshall don't mind me adding them in. I just thought it would be kind of funny and personally would would love to see them in a zombie land situation. I think it would be hilarious. Just gonna hide the bottom of the the Slayer's logo there behind his arm. And the way I change the color so quickly is um, well the the text is still on a separate layer and I just clicked uh, lock transparent pixels. Um, this is in Paintstorm Studio but it's the same in uh, Photoshop. I've got no reference for the back of Stan's head. As you can imagine, that would be difficult to find. <laughs> so uh, just winging it here. For my self-portrait, I looked through some old photographs but couldn't really find anything that I liked or that would suit this, uh, this character. So spent a bit of time uh, messing around on my webcam different hats because <laughs> I don't have a baseball cap. I looked at a few different angles and uh, basically settled on a wide-eyed kind of comical psycho crazy look. Thought it would suit the dark comedy of the uh, the movie genre pretty well. Not gonna lie it felt a little weird painting myself. It's been many years since I've done a self-portrait. And this was a particularly um, challenging angle with the head tilted slightly back. In the end, I actually don't know if I pulled it off, but uh, it's always good to challenge yourself because that's how you grow. Just blocking in my wild hair here as a basic shape. I'll of course add separations and highlights a little bit later. And now with the actual head on the figure I can see that the bat needs to be twisted a little bit so that it looks like it's resting on uh, my shoulder. If I recall this isn't uh, the last time I redraw the bat either in this video. <laughs> At this point I realize that if my head is tilting back then the arch of the cap needs to be a little bit more round because right now it's making it look like I'm facing straight forward would have been so much easier with uh, with cap reference. In my webcam reference the lighting is kind of frontal so I'm going to have to kind of imagine what it would look like with uh, the light hitting the side of my face instead. Trying to fix the shape of my boobies here. In the reference pose um, the model was kind of flat chested so I couldn't really copy that, but you can see with the, with the right shoulder a little bit higher, it means that the right breast needs to be a little bit higher. 
At this point I'm realizing the proportion is a bit off. The head needs to be bigger. I do have quite a large head. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the titties need to be higher. I mean, at 40, they're not as high as they used to be, but they're not that low. <laughs> Just use the lasso tool there to select and transform the logo so that it sits better on top of the breasts. At this point the painting seems to be coming together but I feel like it's too light and the colors are boring so uh, I decided it's time to punch them up a little bit and uh, play around with some adjustment layers. I also want the uniforms and the skin a bit brighter so what I'm doing here is I'm painting uh, in white or in a pale color and using an adjustment layer on top of the existing paint. I worked on the background a little bit here. I wanted a gradient but not an airbrushy gradient so I used a big square brush so that I could get some natural texture in there. At this point besides the text um, pretty much everything was in one layer so I just duplicated that layer and after playing extensively with the adjustment layers I found that Vivid Light was giving me the posterized look that I wanted but it was making parts of the image far too dark so I tried using different adjustment layers for those darker parts of the image didn't really work that well so what I did was I ended up kind of with a mishmash of adjustment layers and then just painting over uh, to get the effect that I wanted. So I decided I wanted third base a little bit more punchy and saturated and uh, also what you see me doing here is I'm using um, the part of the image that turned out well, the central part, as a palette. So I'm, I'm using the colors that I like to paint over the colors that uh, don't really belong. At this point I decided to take a break from uh, trying to fix Marshall and Stan and uh, decided to do a paint over of the logo. I'm not sure if you can see it in the video but the logo that I pulled in is um, kind of pixelated. It was a low res PNG so um, I thought even, even if the logo ends up looking painterly that's fine rather painterly than pixelated. So just uh, lowered the opacity on the PNG and painting in a flat color on a new layer. Once I'm done with the top layer, I create a new layer for the bottom layer, the extruded part. I know that I don't want it to be green, but it doesn't matter because I know that I can lock the pixels and paint over it with any color. And of course I do, I choose a, a darker orange. And I finish it off with uh, some even darker orange in the parts where I feel like the light would be occluded. So just the shadow areas basically. So here I am eventually repainting uh, Marshall Vandruff's face. I hope I've captured his essence, which I think is that smile that indicates that there's a dad joke on the way. <laughs> So I started painting in some curls and then uh, I got distracted by how wonky the club is looking. It also needs to be a little bit thinner so here I am uh, redrawing the club for the last time. Almost forgot what's a baseball bat in the apocalypse without some barbed wire. So at this, at this point I was basically happy so I just went around sharpening and softening things up as needed. And here we go, here's the final. A really fun challenge, even if I don't win, it was uh, well worth the time spent. And um, I guess that's it, thanks for watching. And uh, much obliged if you leave a like and subscribe. Until the next one, God bless.